A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Glory to you, After six days, Jesus took him, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothing became as white as the light. Just then, they appeared before them Moses, Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord is, it, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If you wish, I'll put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, Jesus, This is my son, whom I love. With him I, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no, no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This Gospel of Christ. Good morning to all of you here at CMP, both in person and online. It is a blessing to be together, first of all, and um, a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for who you are, for the glory that has been revealed to us, for the sacrifice that you've made so that we can know you, not just know about you, but to know you personally. And we pray that you would help us this morning to see more of who you truly are and experience more of you in our everyday life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, we are going to be talking about the last uh, scripture that was read by Joel. Thank you so much. Your reading was just, just fantastic. And to all of our readers and all the people that really helped put this service together week after week. And we are very grateful for our children that uh, get to participate in our service. So a special thank you for the kids at this time. You guys are gonna come up um, in a second before we actually get into that text about the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. We have to go back just a little bit to the chapter before. So we were in Matthew 17. And so we're going to go just a little bit to Matthew 16. So we can have the next slide, because where it starts off in Matthew 17, it says, after six days. I just realized I have the clicker. Sorry, I will click. I forgot I had it. Okay, so it starts off, verse 1, saying, after six days. So, you know, hopefully if you get to a verse of the Bible that says, after some time, or this happened after this, it's good to go back and see, okay, what happened six days ago? So right before this, in Matthew 16, Jesus is with his disciples. He is being, of course, questioned by the Pharisees and Sadducees, and they're looking to trip him up, and they're, you know, they're constantly trying to find ways to get rid of Jesus, and you know, they're, they're asking all sorts of questions, trying to trip him up. And Jesus has a discussion with his disciples, and he says, okay, so um, who, like, we have all these discussions about the things that I'm doing and what's going on, and they're calling me a heretic and all these things and saying I should be stoned. So what do the people say? Who do the people say that I am? Who do the people say that I am? What's, what is the impression of Jesus at that time? And the thing is, even today in 2023, there is an impression of Jesus. There is an impression of God. There is an impression of the church. And unfortunately, it's not always a good one. But is that the truth? Is the view that people have in our world today, or even the, the view of the people um, in Jesus' time, is it accurate? Is that impression of Jesus an accurate depiction of who he truly was and is today? And I think it's yes and no. 
because Jesus really was a, a wonderful teacher. He was a healer. He was a miracle worker. He was a lot of things. But what he truly, truly was, was the son of God. And not everybody understood that and not everybody knew that. Most people did not. And so in Matthew 16, 16, he asked Peter, who do you say that I am? And the thing is, Peter walked with Jesus. Peter was called by Jesus. Peter experienced Jesus. He knew Jesus intimately. They shared meals together. They ministered together. They walked together. They were in communion together constantly for over three years. So you, Peter, who should know me the best, who do you say that I am? And Peter gets it right. He says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus says that could only have been revealed to you, that could only have been shown to you, the truth of that could have only been shown to you by the heavenly father. And that's the same thing for us. There is a revelation of Jesus that God is continuously pouring out to his people on earth today. God wants his son to be known. God is not hiding. God is not far away. God is near and God wants to be revealed. And he is wanting to reveal the truth of his love, his grace, and his goodness to all of us, even today in 2023. Now, the thing is, we don't always get that. We don't always see that part of it. Um, so now I'm going to ask the kids to come forward. So if you're part of Kids Connect, if you can come to the front, you're going to try to help me explain or demonstrate the next part of the story. Now, this is going to be a little difficult because it is the sunniest day. <laughs> like, it's so sunny. It is the, the, set, like, the snow has fallen. So there's even extra glare out there, but we're going to try to illustrate a little bit of what was happening right after this. So I am also going to ask Noah to come up because I like to pick on Noah. And Noah is going to be our Jesus for today, if you don't mind, if you so humbly can be part of this. Okay, so the thing is, so after this, Jesus calls up three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and he's going to show them something very special. Like, only three of these people got to see this. We're going to try to recreate this. Probably not really going to work. So, in this box, I have... Actually, you guys, you can actually slide a little forward. Slide a little forward. There we go. Oh, bye. <laughs> you guys have so much more strength than I would have. <laughs> okay, so what's in this box? What's in this box? Yes, a lot of different lights. Can you turn them on for me, please? So just hand them out. Yeah, there's a lot of different lights. There's probably not one for all of you, but that is okay. So there's a lot of different ones. Can you turn them all on for me? You have to figure them out a little bit. Okay, you don't get that one because... Can I have the one that has, like, the little fairy lights? The little fairy lights? Here. You can have that one. Yes. Oh, right. Perfect. Okay. So in the verse, it says that Jesus invited three of his disciples to come up with him. And it said that his face was shining and his clothes were very, very bright. So I don't know if we can make Noah's face shine without blinding him. So yeah. we're not going to shine lights in his face. We're not shining lights. But we might want to like maybe put this on his head, like maybe just kind of wrap that around. Was, is that helpful? <laughs> Is that helpful? Very yeah, helpful. okay. You might have to, like, hold that battery. I'll just stick it in your shirt. Okay, maybe if we can... Can we have the lights off? Do you mind if just... Maybe if we can turn the lights off? So, and that one, we might not want it red. We might want to turn it back to white. Yes. All right, so... Okay, so, thank you. All right, and so they said his face was shining really bright, and then his clothes were also shining really white. So can we put all of the light on Noah as close as we can get? Under what? his, uh, no, maybe we won't go uh, under no. his clothes. Oh, we, no. So this one can go a bit brighter. No, this one. How many? We need another light. Where, where are the lights? So you got to like shine it on him. Like, see, no. You know what? It's not really working. It doesn't work like that. You know why? You, why do you think it's not working? I'm not a light. You're, yeah, you're, but exactly. You're not. Noah is not a light. Guess what? Noah is not a light. Okay, can you, you can leave them on, but put them back in the box. 
Leave them turned on, but put them back in the box. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Noah. We can give Noah a hand for trying to be Jesus, but he really, really was not. So can you turn on that light and we're going to, yeah, put it back in the box. We're going to leave it there for now. So the thing is, is that no matter how much we can kind of recreate this transfiguration of Jesus, it's impossible because it wasn't a light that was shining on Jesus. It wasn't like he had a a walking spotlight behind him. He wasn't like a superstar that had someone carrying a light behind him. It was him. He was the light. And there is another verse that talks about Jesus being the light of the world. He doesn't need extra light. He is the light. And there's something about his light that's also his love. God doesn't need extra love. God is love. God doesn't need extra truth. He is truth. He doesn't need extra grace. He is grace. And the thing is, not everybody was able to see that. And also because Jesus also wasn't fully revealing all of who he was. He was showing them that he was very powerful. He was doing a lot of miracles. Can you guys name any of the miracles that Jesus did? Yes. Uh, when when the blind guy came unblind. That is <laughs> well put, yes. When he fed some wedding fish to millions and millions of people. Yes, so it was like thousands and thousands, but yes, he fed thousands of people. One time he fed, you know how many? There's twice it happened. The first time, take a guess, how many? Oh, you, I see thinking faces. It was 5,000, 5,000 men plus women and children. And another time it was a little bit smaller, but still a lot. You know how many? Was it five? It was? 4,000, that's right. So like, and so what else did he do? So he, um, he healed a blind man. He fed people miraculously. What else did, he, what else did Jesus do? Yeah? Turn water into wine. Turn water into wine. My favorite. Yeah? Ooh, the fish one. That was really cool. Like they were, the fish, the disciples were fishing and they couldn't find anything. And then he's like, just go over there. They're like, what do you know about fishing? You're just some random guy. But then when they did go to the other side of the boat, they had the biggest catch that they could ever have, like ever get. And that was Peter that experienced that. So that was, so that really impacted Peter. Just one more, one more miracle that Jesus did. Well, two more. We can't two more. He raised Lazarus from the dead. That was a big one. Yes. Okay, we got more. Okay, one and two in the, for now. That was very, very impressive. Yes. So he cast out demons, and they were put into some pigs that ran off a hill and jumped into some water. Great story, though. Yes. Last one. And he walked on water. So there were a lot of things that Jesus did that was very, 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 very spectacular. And it's great that Jesus does all these, like, these miracles. But the thing is, him doing miracles is not the biggest thing about Jesus. The biggest and most beautiful thing about Jesus is that he himself is God. Because it's like, sometimes it's great that people do great things, and it's nice to have the things, it's nice to have the blessings of God, it's nice to be like, Okay, thank you, God, for all these things. But in the end, what's most important is knowing God personally. Because God can seem very far off sometimes and very big and very mysterious. But because God sent his son, Jesus, Jesus is the one that, you know, walked with people, had supper together. And, you know, he might have done some miracles, but he still ate with them. He joked with them. He walked with them. He cried with them. He laughed with them. He did life with them. And Jesus wants to do life with us too. And the thing is, Jesus, even with all these, you know, his glory that was, you know, shining, we can have the next, oh, I can have the next slide. Why do I keep doing this? Um, Jesus revealed himself. So at first we had Peter that was saying, you are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. And then we had Jesus showing that he was the Messiah, showing that he was the Son of God. The thing is, is that he didn't change all of a sudden. It wasn't like, one day I'm a man, the next day I'm God. He was always the whole time God. And the thing is that 
even like with Jesus, like we have this box full of light and you guys can't really see it from there, but all these lights are on. But it's just because we closed the box doesn't mean these lights stop being light. Doesn't mean these lights stop shining. It just means it gets a little covered. You know, but as soon as you open the box, if this is a really, really, really dark room, you would see all this bright light because the light is always there. Jesus never stopped being God, and Jesus has not stopped being God even till today. So sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes it's veiled. Sometimes it's a little hidden, but it's always there. God's love, God's grace is always there. And that's one thing that we need for us to help us even in our day to day. And one of the things that happened is that, so they, they saw this really bright light. How do you think they felt? What, did, what, would, what would you do if like Noah really was like a person that just started shining this huge bright light and was like, ah, what, what, did, what would you feel? You would be, I would be scared too. How would you feel? Surprised. So, <laughs> very surprised. I mean, after three years, you haven't seen anything like this, but then all of a sudden. So yeah, surprised, scared, what else? Anybody else? How do you think they felt? Even some, you know, the adults can answer too. How do you think they would have felt? All of a sudden seeing Jesus in his bright, shining light. Odd? Yes, very, very odd. How else do you think they felt? amazed, absolutely, and they did feel amazed. And the funny thing is, is that they were okay with it. They were like, this is making sense. We love this side of Jesus. We've been following this guy, and here he is in this big, beautiful light, and it's amazing. And they said, let's stay. Let's take a tent. We'll make some shelters, and we're going to hang out with this amazing side of Jesus because this is blowing our minds. And there is something about when we experience the fullness of God that makes us want to stay with God, that makes us want to hang out with Jesus, that makes us want to just stay in the presence of God. And so it's a natural thing when we experience God's love to want more and more and more of God's love in our life. And then they hear this giant voice, that just booming voice that says, this I can't even do a deep voice. I would love to just be able to go like this, but I can try. I don't think it's working. No, I don't have a deep enough voice. It says, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And this is the thing. Jesus did not just do all these things because he felt like it. Jesus was very intentional about the miracles he was doing, the words he was saying, the teachings that he was teaching because he was doing it because the Father had sent him to earth to bring people together, to bring people together, to bring us to God. So he was very intentional, and God was very specific when he said, you know what? Jesus is telling you guys really, really, really important things. You have to listen to him. And sometimes that's the hardest part. Knowing God, loving God, that could be kind of... But listening to the things of God, that's not as easy. Is it always easy to follow the rules? Is it always listen, easy to listen to our parents? When our parents say, wash the dishes. <sighs> Go clean your room. <sighs> Never. <laughs> or, you know, or they say, no more screen time. You know, you're like, oh. it's not always easy to listen. But a lot of the times these things are for our good. And God does so much and says so much that are for our good and for his glory. And so when he said this to the disciples, he wanted them to really understand that the things that were happening were from God, that this was something that was happening beyond what they were experiencing, that this was something that God had intended for them to experience because the, this is what was going to happen. There was going to be some really hard stuff coming up. So they had had a really great time with Jesus. They were seeing all these miracles. They're doing all these things, watered into wine, party time, feasts. It's great. But he was also like, by the way, there is some trouble coming up. Do you guys know what was going to happen to Jesus? We kind of celebrated around Easter, yeah? He was going to be crucified. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he was going to be crucified, and that was going to shake their worlds because they were used to seeing Jesus in control, telling off the Pharisees, telling people this, casting out demons, and they were going to see him die. They were going to see him beaten. They were going to see him like mocked. They were going to see a lot of really horrible things, and it wasn't going to make a lot of sense. And the thing is, that happens to us in our own lives. Things happen that are very sad. Things happen that are very painful. Things happen that make us cry. That things happen that we don't understand. And God is still there. And God says, "You can listen to me. You can trust me. I will help you through all this." And God was saying that to the disciples, kind of warning them. But we can have that same promise to us now that we can still trust in God. We can listen to God. And God will be us, even when things get really, 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 really difficult. So the last thing I want to say is that Christ is also revealed by us. He's revealed. He was revealed by Peter. He was revealed. Christ revealed Himself. God showed us who Jesus really was, and we get to be a vessel for God's light as well. So there's a verse in Matthew 5:16 that says, "Let your light shine before others, that you may see, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven." So this is the thing that I want you guys to really, really remember: that you guys have the same opportunity to be light to others. So, what do you think that means? What is it? What do you think it means to be light to others? Yeah. Yeah, be nice to others. That would be great if we were all just nice. And you guys can answer too. What does it mean to be light to other people? What are these good deeds that we can be doing? What do you think? So being nice. What else is there? Being generous. Generous. Yeah. Being generous, helping other people. Yeah. Yes. Love others. Love others. Yes, that is very important. How about two more? How can we give? What are these good deeds that we can be doing? These good things. Yes, Christine. Ooh, hope and encouragement. Very nice. A kind word soothes the heart. Yes. Anybody else? Loving your neighbor. Sorry. Loving your neighbor. Loving your neighbor. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Same. Yes. Loving your neighbor. Yes. Being kind to your neighbor. And so those are things that we can absolutely do. That we can show other people the goodness and the love of God. So I want to thank you guys for helping me out. So you can give yourselves a hand. You can go and sit down.、Um, I'm just gonna just give one more point. Thank you so so much. So the thing is, there's、uh, another verse also in Second Corinthians three that says, "And we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree to another." And that's the thing is that us to reveal this glory of God to our neighbors, to our friends and our family, that is something that we that takes time. That as we Spend time with God as we spend time with the fellowship of His believers. As we spend time in God's Word, we, like the disciples, you know, are spending time getting to know Jesus, getting to know His ways, getting to understand His heart, understand His heart for the poor, understand His heart for the needy, understand His heart for the hurting. That transforms us as we grow in Christ. We become like Christ. And as we become like Christ, doing good deeds, glorifying the Father, we too can become that light to a world that really, 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 really needs it. They need it here. We need it here. We need our hearts to be transformed by the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. And so, my encouragement for for you all is to. Gravitate to the light. Gravitate to the glory of Christ revealed. Gravitate to the things of God as we become the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are great. You are glorious. You are righteous. And Lord, we thank you for who you are and how you draw us to you. 
changing us to be more like your son. And we thank you for every opportunity that we have to love others, to be kind to others, to encourage others, so that they may know you and glorify you as well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And so Noah, I'm going to ask you to come up. And before Noah does the prayers, we are going to say the Apostles' Creed together.